Hey guys, Adam Katz for DogTrainerToolbox.com. I wanted to just kind of discuss something just to explore some ideas around a certain marketing related subject and how it might relate to your dog training business or if you haven't opened up a dog training business yet, a future dog training business that you might be starting or if you already have a dog training business but you're looking at going into another area, just some vague thoughts. That's kind of my disclaimer to say that I'm probably just going to be rambling. So I've been toying around with this idea, this idea of the starving market. Gary Halbert, who's a famous copywriter, copywriter and, and marketing consultant. Uh, copywriting, by the way, is the art of writing persuasive text. Uh, this guy was a genius. He made millions and millions of dollars for his clients writing persuasive words. Uh, he was you know, doing sales letters. He was doing um, uh, television infomercials. He was doing... Uh, writing ads, all kinds of different stuff. And he made millions of dollars. He was a brilliant guy. And also quite a character, but he was a brilliant guy. And he posed a question at one of his seminars. He said, what is the one most important thing you need to have if you want to start a hamburger business? If you want to start up a little hamburger restaurant, what's the one most important thing? And people were raising their hand and, and answering things like great customer service. They were saying things like you know, the best quality meat. They're saying things like, you know, uh, 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 the most expansive menu that includes things for both, you know, vegetarians and the opposite and all, all these different answers. And finally, when everybody had kind of exhausted the subject, he replied that the most important thing you need is a starving market. If you have a starving market, you don't need to have the best quality meat. You don't need to have the best quality customer service even. You don't need any of that. If you have a starving market, they will spend pretty much any amount of money to buy your hamburger. Imagine, you know, people show up in a raft, you know, they haven't eaten in two or three days. And by some stroke of fate, they happen to have money and they show up on the beach where you've set up your hamburger shack. Um, do you need to have the greatest hamburger in the world to sell hamburgers to those people? You don't. So with that in mind, um, let's think about how we can apply that to your dog training business. So there's, there's really kind of a number of different ways you can look at this. You can say, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna identify a market where there aren't any other dog trainers and I'm gonna go and service that market. The potential problem with that, and, and I used to say the problem with that, but I've actually encountered a number of people who are doing amazingly well with their dog training business in really small markets is because uh, they're, they're basically catering to a starving market. They're in a situation where uh, somebody would have to drive hundreds of miles to, to work with another dog trainer and they're the only game in town. But what if you're not the only game in town? You know, I understand this may not be a direct analogy, but let's say that, um, let's say for example, you were a member of the, the Hindu community and you, were, you had a dog training business or maybe you're Jewish or Episcopalian, what, whatever, it doesn't really matter. You're a member of some specific group. Um, you know, you, you may, it may even be that you're a member of a, a, a hobby, for example, and there's a, a very large gun club, for example, and the church or the temple or whatever it may be, the gun club, uh, puts out a newsletter to all of its members and you are the only dog trainer advertising in that newsletter. In fact, you become known as the only dog trainer for that community. I used to work for an uh, apprentice with a guy when I first got into dog training back when dinosaurs roamed the earth and he got very, very tight with the Kerry Blue Terrier community. Now, that is not a popular breed. Even today, it is not a popular breed. But it's a very tight-knit breed. And the, the people who own that breed are extreme enthusiasts. And if you've ever worked with one, you've probably worked with one because the dog had aggression problems because they're terriers and they're tough terriers. Um, and so a lot of them have dog aggression issues. A lot of them have handler aggression issues. And this dog trainer I apprenticed with was an expert at dealing with dog aggression issues. 
And after having success with two or three different Kerry Blue Terriers, suddenly he became known as the guy that can work miracles with Kerry Blue Terriers. And if you were an enthusiast, an aficionado of the Kerry Blue Terrier, and you had a dog that had some behavior problems, or you just had a dog that you wanted to do obedience training with, you wanted to work with this gentleman. Basically, he had cornered the market. Now, here was a starving crowd, and especially back then, in the early to mid-90s, there weren't as many dog trainers as there are now. And don't kid yourself, even now, we're still in a very immature market, or unmatured market. There's still a thousand dog owners with dog behavior problems for every one dog trainer. But he had cornered the market for this breed. And anybody who got into the breed who needed a dog trainer was going to use him. I did this personally. I was advertising with my first dog training business back in the, uh, it would have been the mid to late 90s. Um, and uh, I advertised in my synagogue newsletter. And uh, guess what? Were there other dog trainers advertising in the synagogue? No. Now, it wasn't a big synagogue. We had maybe 250 families. But it didn't cost me a lot either. I think it cost me maybe like 35 bucks to run that ad. And I think back now, if I had used that, that strategy, not just for synagogues, but also for churches and temples and other organizations too, you know, even if you don't pull a client a month, let's say you pull two clients a year, but it's 35 bucks a month to run your ad in the newsletter. So that would be, you figure you get a discount, you're at about $350 per year and you pull two clients, and let's say you only charge $1,000 per month, uh, sorry, $1,000 per dog. Um, you only charge $1,000 per dog, and a lot of you are charging $3,000 for a board and train program, right? Let's just play a conservative. Let's say you charge $1,000 a dog. You sell two dogs in the entire year, and you spent $350, and the next year, what happens is those two members that you work with, they start telling their friends and their friends and so on and so forth. And pretty soon, you become the person who has cornered the market in that church, in that synagogue, in that gun club, whatever it may be. You become the guy. Now, does that make that a, a attacking a starving market? Probably not. I'm probably confusing a couple of different issues or... or uh, uh, blending a couple of different issues together. Um, but those people don't offhand, um, a lot of them may not be actively looking for a dog trainer, but they're seeing your ad every month, right? And then when they do need a dog trainer, are they gonna be more inclined, even if you're not in their church? And I've done this, I've, I used to run ads, I've, it's a different business, I had a real estate investing business where we'd buy um, run down rental properties, fix them up and then re-rent them. And um, um, I, I would run ads on the, uh, the Christian radio network in Austin, Texas. And I'm, I'm not even Christian, you know, but they had no trouble taking my money. I was supporting them and, and their church, their ministry. Um, and in the process, reaching everybody who listened to that radio station. By the way, it was very, very cheap to do that. It was, I don't, I don't remember exactly, but at the time it was maybe, uh, I want to say 250 to 300 bucks. And uh, it reached a lot of people, and the ad did really, really well. Now, you might be thinking, you weren't a Christian and you were advertising. Yeah, it doesn't matter. See, the people want to work with you because you're supporting their group. You're supporting their church by advertising on their, uh, on their, their radio program or in their, their newsletter. Um, you know, if you're a member of the LGBTQ community, hope I got that right, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of publications that cater just to that market. Um, even if you're not, but you're just a supporter, great place to advertise because, you know, these people, if I phrase that wrong, you know what I mean? This group of people, like any group of people, um, they want to support people either in their community or people who support their community. You might even say they're starving to support people within their community rather than just some random dog trainer. So take those two ideas and, and play with them as you will. Um, identifying a starving market uh, by first testing uh, to see and identify whether or not 
the area that you're selecting or the group that you're selecting is a starving market or not. Um, and then setting yourself up to corner that market. Uh, really, really powerful concepts here. And if you use those, uh, you're gonna set yourself apart from all of the other dog trainers in your market. Um, another word for this is target marketing. Anyways, listen, hey, I'm Adam Katz for dogtrainertoolbox.com. Check us out, specifically our Done For You Dog Training Business website. It's proven and tested to convert cold traffic into hot leads. And we've done this now in several different markets. It works really, really well. Instead of fumbling around and trying to build your own website and ending up with something that looks like a nine-year-old did it because you're a great dog trainer, but you're a terrible web designer and you don't know anything about writing copy, um, just let us do it for you. It's a proven out of the box uh, experience. It's a proven out of the box website that you can have us completely set up for you and be up and running in less than 14 days and getting all the traffic that you're already getting, converting it. The basic premise being that if you can go from one in 10 people, sorry, one in 10 people who land on your website and pick up the phone and call you to one in five, you've just doubled your revenue without having to spend any more money. Check it out at dogtrainertoolbox.com. Take care, guys.